everybody, welcome back to our tutorial series on using the FreeCAD Path Workbench. In this video, video number three, I'm going to be talking about the visualization and simulation tools. These are tools that we have for exploring and understanding the paths that we create so that we can find errors early. So let's go ahead and jump in, but before we do, I'm going to talk a little bit about the view itself and understanding what we're seeing on this screen. What I have on my screen is a sample project that has a job with three operations configured, a drilling, pocket, and a contour. What they have in common is the way that they're represented on the screen. In all cases, a green line indicates a feed move where the cutter is engaged with the material, and a red line indicates a rapid move where the cutter is above the material and just repositioning from one place to another. If I hover over one of these lines, you'll see that a blue cone is added to indicate the direction of travel. In this case, in my contour, the cutter is moving in a clockwise manner around the part. At the same time, the status line gives me some details about the selected segment. In this case, it's a G1 move, and the X, Y, and Z coordinates follow. The number 13 is the index of this command within the operation. So this is the 13th move within the contour operation. If you remember in other parts of FreeCAD, you can select an object and press the spacebar to toggle the visibility. I'll turn off my body object so we can focus on the path segments. However, if I select the job and press the spacebar, there's very little change. If I select the drilling operation, there's no change at all. And likewise with pocket, no change at all. What's happening is that these operations have their own visibility that's different from the visibility of the job that contains them. So the jobs view is sort of a composite of all of the underlying objects. To completely hide things, you'd have to turn off the job and then turn off each of the operations. Now looking at G-codes one at a time on the status line isn't very efficient. And so we have an inspection tool that allows us to look at the complete output of an operation. If I select the contour operation and click on the inspect, it'll bring up a dialog box that I can see all of the G-code at once. If I highlight one of the commands in this list, the corresponding segment in the 3D view is highlighted. In fact, you can select multiple and create an, a kind of an animation effect showing the process of the cutter moving around the material. Inspection gives us a good idea what's happening with the G-code, but it doesn't tell us much about what the final product will look like or how the cut will proceed. For that, we have a simulator tool. Select the simulator tool, and you'll see that the stock material is added to the 3D view along with a representation of the tool. In the task panel, you can select and deselect individual operations to be included in the simulation. Speed controls how fast the cutter appears to move and won't reflect the actual output as configured in the G-code. Simulation can be very processor intensive, and if you're at a 0.1% accuracy, it can bog down even a multi-core machine. I recommend dialing this back to 0.4 or greater. These buttons control the actual simulation. Click on the play to see it. If I click cancel at this point, the stock material, the cutter, and everything else will be deleted from the view and I'll be returned back to my starting condition. However, if I say OK and scroll down the list, you'll see that a new cut material part was added to the document. This is a mesh object and it represents the material as it was left over. We can do some interesting things with it and we might look at that in a later video. For now, you can just select the cut material and click Delete. PATH has one more set of tools that can be used to explore the result of your operations. 
They're a little bit obscure, but they can be useful in a number of situations. Like other things that are shown in the 3D window, our operations have a view provider, and the view provider properties can be changed by clicking on this tab. If I select the contour object and switch to the view tab, you'll see a number of properties related to the line width and color. That adjusts the color of the actual segments, and you can adjust it to your preference. This is very similar to other parts of FreeCAD. However, there are properties here that are unique to Path. For instance, Show Nodes. If I select the contour and turn the nodes on, you'll see that a number of markers have been added to the start and end of each segment. If I turn off my body object again, you'll see that markers have also been added to the center point of each arc. In G-Code, the center coordinates of an arc are an offset from one end of the arc. So it's a little bit troublesome if you wanted to calculate the exact position. With the nodes turned on, you can hover over this position and the coordinates will be shown on the status line. Showing nodes has one other application that can be useful. If a drilling operation is set up to do peck drilling, as this one is, turning on the nodes will show you exactly where the cutter will peck at each step down. Also in the view provider are two properties, show count and show index. These control how much of the path is actually rendered on the screen. Turning my attention to the pocket operation that I created, mine is fairly simple, <clears throat> but you can imagine a pocket operation getting very dense with a lot of steps down and a really and, and lines very tight and close together. It can be hard to visualize exactly what's happening. If show count is set to zero, then all parts of the path are rendered, but you can change this to any other number. If I set it to 10, only the first 10 moves are shown, including the rapid move. Start index controls which 10 moves are shown. This is the first 10 moves starting at 0, but if I set this to 10, it'll be the 10 moves starting at move number 10. Well, that's it for the simulation and inspection tools. I hope you found this helpful. If you did or didn't, please offer a comment below. Uh, in the next video, we'll get into some of the details of creating and configuring the operations. And until then, thanks for watching.